Welcome to the Open Hardware Summit. Welcome Hello, everyone. everyone. The most important day of the year. Uh, my name is Alicia Gibb. I am the executive director of the Open Source Hardware Association, which brings you this summit. Uh, and I'm Michael Weinberg, the board president of the Open Source Hardware Association. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, so as all of you know, it has been a tumultuous year. Uh, we at Oshawa hope that you and yours are have done well through this year and are doing well today. Um, we just wanted to uh, take care of a couple um, various housekeeping items. Uh, usually this is where we would tell you where the bathrooms are in a physical summit. Since it's virtual, you all know where your bathroom is. Um, we still have a few things to go over though. Uh, first and foremost, thank you, thank you, thank you to our sponsors. A giant thank you to our sponsors. We could not pull off this summit without you. We were so um, heartened to see so many of our sponsors coming back this year and new sponsors giving this year as we know that we're in an economic downturn um, and this year has been difficult for everyone. So huge thank you to our sponsors. We couldn't pull it off without you. An extra shout out to DIA who we inadvertently missed their logo last year. We want to point you to the code of conduct. Even though we are in a virtual space, our code of conduct still exists. It is on the summit website if you need to find it. And a big thank you to our moderators, Drew Faustini, Nathan Jones, and Christina Ramsey, who are moderating the various chats. Please make their job easy by following the code of conduct. Another announcement, there is a virtual expo hall, which our sponsors will have tables at. Um, Oshawa will have a table there as well if you want to talk to us. This will be from 1225 to 135 Eastern time. And a few other details about this platform. We will be using the chat feature on Hopin this year instead of Discord so that we're all in the same place. And under the sessions tab, you'll be able to find breakout rooms if you're interested in discussing the talk topic further in depth after the talk. And now I will let you tell people what we have been doing this past year at Oshawa. Fantastic. So yes, I get to talk about uh, what's been going on in the world of open source hardware, the world of Oshawa. Obviously, the biggest thing that's happened in the world of open source hardware this year is the same thing that's happened in the entire world this year, and that has been COVID. Uh, COVID has obviously presented a huge number of challenges, but one of the silver linings of COVID has been watching the open source hardware community step up and respond, especially in the early days of the crisis, there was just a shortage of everything, right? We needed PPE, we needed equipment, we needed hardware, we needed stuff. And the open source hardware community across the world stepped up and said, we know how to design this stuff. We know how to manufacture this stuff. We know how to distribute this. We know how to get it where it needs to be quickly in a distributed manner. And so this has been a really fantastic proving out of how well open source hardware can be used to respond to crises. We already have at least two reports on how the open source hardware community responded to COVID. I know there's more information out there. We as Oshawa wanna be talking about this. We wanna be understanding what worked, what didn't work and how to make it better. So if you have more information about uh, open source hardware responses to COVID, please let us know, send it in. We want to hear about it. Another thing that we did this year, and this was tied to the 10th anniversary of the summit last year, was try and step back a little bit and produce an open source hardware weather report. And this was designed to help everyone understand kind of what's happening in the open source hardware community. If you're a longtime member of the community, it was a place to understand uh, some of the things that we've actually figured out and some of the challenges that we're working on. And if you're new to the community, it was a nice entry point to understand what is the state of open source hardware today and where it's going. So we really hope this is a useful resource for everyone. Uh, we wanna think about doing more in the future. If you're trying to get your head around where we are as open source hardware, this is a great place to start. Another thing to talk about, of course, is the open source hardware certification program. Uh, this certification program is a free program and it's really a fantastic way to be able to talk about and show that hardware, not only it's, it, people are saying it's open source hardware, but it's hardware that complies with the community definition of open source hardware as maintained by Oshawa. The most important thing about the program is probably that it is free. It's very easy to certify. Um, when you certify, it takes about, usually takes less than two weeks. And again, it costs no money. If you go to certification.oshawa.org, you can just start the certification process. Once you get certified, you get to use the certification logo 
and you get a unique identifier that allows people to find your documentation easily. And that means as a user, if you see someone talking about open source hardware, if they have the certification logo, that means their version of open source hardware, their, how they think about open source hardware meets the community definition of open source hardware. One of the great things about having a certification program is we now have a really rich directory of certified hardware. It's easy to explore. You can find it by country. You can find it by application. There's all sorts of ways to explore it. Uh, it's a really rich and growing resource to understand what's happening in the world of open source hardware. Another thing that people maybe aren't as familiar with as part of the certification website we have a bunch of information about how to do open source hardware, how to document open source hardware, also how to license open source hardware. This is a really rich resource if you're trying to get your head around how to approach especially questions like documentation and licensing and some of the legal issues around open source hardware. If you're wondering about these things, I recommend checking out, again, certification.oshwa.org. We're actually in the process of updating and refreshing this information. So it's great now. It's going to be even better in the future. If you have questions, this is a great time for us to make tweaks and address them. So please let us know. Now, the certification program is doing really, really well. You can see this is the growth of the program over time. Uh, you know, COVID is a, is a time where people are at home, maybe have a little bit more time to do documentation and to submit things for certification. So we're seeing real growth. If you have hardware that you want to get certified, this is a great time to, to join the club, to get on board, submit that free certification application. We can get you your UID and you can get in the directory. So please check that out. Another way that, another thing we like about the certification program is it gives us a way to understand the growth of open source hardware over time. Uh, every year I put this slide together, I worry we're not gonna see more countries, but we keep seeing more countries. One thing to note is that we're now on every single continent except for Antarctica. There's someone out there in this audience who knows about open source hardware in Antarctica. Let's make it happen. Let's get Antarctica in the directory and have all of the continents for open source hardware. Uh, finally, because it's such a rich resource for the certification, we've now launched the Read Write Certification API. And that API allows you to really explore what is happening in the, in the certification directory. So if you want to explore it, you want to analyze it, you want to do visualizations, you want to do research, uh, you can use the read part of the API to pull down everything and to be able to say, this is what's happening in open source hardware, explore it however you want. We've got great documentation, it's got code snippets, it's got the whole thing. We also have a write side of the certification API. So if you have a bunch of open source hardware that you want to get certified in bulk, if you want to build a certification into your process and automate it, or if you're building a platform that people use to collaborate on open source hardware, it's really easy to use the write side of the API to be able to just do one click application to get things certified. If you're using that, we really want you to tell us about it. And one of the places to tell us you're using the API in cool ways is on Twitter. Alicia has news about Twitter. All right. So a couple of years back, uh, we decided, you know, when Oshawa was really just only doing the summit still, uh, we decided that we should have a Twitter uh, handle for the Open Source Hardware Association itself. Um, since all we were doing at the time was the summit, it just was sort of a duplication of information. We didn't really have anything to share. However, Ashwa has grown a lot uh, since we originally started that Twitter handle. We're now doing many more things than just the summit. We've got Open Harbor Month. We've got the certification. We've got these various reports coming out. So we have other news to, uh, to show. So um, what we've done is we are reintroducing both of our Twitter handles again. Um, so we are going to have the Open Source Hardware Association logo or uh, Twitter handle live again. It is at uh, OSHW Association. Um, and of course, we'll continue doing the at OH Summit as well. Um, so the Summit Twitter handle will be for Summit updates. And then please follow the Ashwa Association Twitter handle for all of our other news and updates. Another announcement that we want to make is that we have a new annual community survey out. You may have taken our community survey last year. That was sort of a nod to our 10 year mark and wanting to get another survey out there um, that, you know, that, that we kind of had a survey 10 years ago. And so 
that was a way to collect information and data over 10 years. But we decided that the, the data that we got, the metrics are so important to the open hardware community and important to um, various uh, ways that we can find out information about our community that we wanted to do the survey annually. So please take our survey again um, this year and we will have these every year moving forward. So next year, I know I said this last year, I was like, we'll see you all in person. I was so naive, <laughs> but 2022, we are really hoping to be in person again. Um, and we were, were telling you that we have a date picked April 22nd, 2022. We're gonna hopefully be in New York City um, and we promise to have cake. We'll be so excited to be all back together again. So a giant thank you to all of you out there for participating in today. Thank you for being awesome. Thank you for all the help that you've provided during this pandemic. Thank you for coming to the Open Hardware Summit. Thank you to our sponsors and our team and volunteers here at Oshawa. And as extra special thanks for MCs this year, you will meet our board member, Nadia Peak after the keynote. She will MC this morning. Um, and another board member, Catherine Scott, will MC the afternoon. And with that, let's get it started. <laughs>